Genesis, September 13, 1956, and Summer, 1968. Sam leaps into an Air Force test pilot hoping to break the Mach 3 barrier, and later a minor league baseball player needing to win the big game. The episode begins with Al, who picks up a woman stranded on the side of the road. As they drive, flashing lights appear on the horizon. They turn out to be coming from Project Quantum Leap. It seems that Dr. Sam Beckett has brazenly and very preemptively turned on the accelerator. Realizing this, Al guns his car, hoping to stop Sam before he makes his dangerous leap through time. As far as openings go, this is quite unlike any other opening we get in the rest of the series. The episode starts off with Al, but for this moment, he's just some guy driving a car through the desert while rocking out to some Futuro-sounding jazz music. The bit with him picking up the woman is a little dorky and rather sitcomish, but I like it. It reminds me of a more innocent time. Plus, it's rather indicative of what will become the trademark of Al's character. It goes without saying, though, that a male character would never be written like this today. It's really shocking to me to think about just how much attitudes and perspectives have changed over the years. But speaking of changes, you know, whenever a show or a movie goes to the future, things look pretty much the same, but there's just some changes here and there to certain things, like in Back to the Future Part 2, where the cars become hover cars and the skateboards become hoverboards. They do this to hopefully convince us that society has progressed and we're in a future setting. Results can vary, you know, depending on budget and creativity. One of the ways they try to do it here is by putting dancing lights on the woman's heels and earrings, which seems like a really silly way to make things look futuristic. But I don't know, it kind of works, don't you think? The effect is kind of low rent, but there's a charm with these accoutrements and I think a kind of tacky Gen Z-like quality that makes me think that these things would probably be a big hit today with kids and teenagers. Or maybe I'm way off and shouldn't jump the gun on testing out that idea. Unlike Sam, who decided to jump into the Quantum Leap Accelerator without telling anybody, which turns out to work, by the way, just not in the way he thought. The Accelerator is pretty cool looking, I think. I have absolutely no idea how any of it is supposed to work, but hey, you know, it looks cool and science-y, so I guess that's all that really matters. My only question is this, why is it so windy in there? Who knows? Well, it looks cool, right? And you know what else is cool? The guy playing Gushy is the same actor they use throughout the whole series. May not seem that important, but I really like that kind of continuity in a show. So Sam wakes up in the body of Tom Stratton, an Air Force test pilot with a wife, son, and the new child on the way. Along with the rest of the pilots at a nearby base, Sam is tasked with breaking the Mach 3 barrier. It's a daring feat that could cost any one of them their lives. And now... Sam's too. Instead of that classic opening sequence with Mike Post's awesome theme music, we get a sequence flying through the clouds. Obviously, they just didn't have the music yet, or didn't even think about cutting together a title sequence because it's just the pilot, and they didn't even know if they were going to get picked up for more episodes. Which is okay, but not very exciting. It does fit with Sam's character as a pilot, though, and it kind of reminds me of the opening from Back to the Future Part 2. So we get some points there. And it's probably no coincidence that in the pilot episode, Sam has leapt into a pilot. Just saying. So as you can imagine, having leapt into an aviator, we get a lot of flying-related bits and material. Most of it, though, if not all of it, is pretty cliched and derivative, I think. We get a cadre of cocky, arrogant pilots, worrisome but loyal wives, flight doctors to get no respect, and scenes of hot shots going faster than fast because these guys don't know the meaning of playing it safe. Now, I don't mean to say that it's all bad and not entertaining, but I can't help but feel echoes of things that came before, like Top Gun and mostly the right stuff, of course. Sam's pilot friend, Bill Bird Dog Burdell, feels an awful lot like Dennis Quaid's character in the right stuff to me, and it's probably no accident. Donald Bellisario was, without a doubt, influenced by the book and the movie, which is fine. I just wish he would have put more of a fresh spin on the story and characters. For example, the plot's thrust of everyone wanting to break the Mach 3 barrier is a lot like all the pilots in the right stuff competing over who's going to be the first one to go up in space. 
I do, however, use the word plot pretty loosely because there really isn't much of one here. Basically, Sam is dealing with the after effects of quantum leaping, you know, his Swiss cheesed memory. And amnesia can work for a story, but here, there's just no external conflict for Sam to struggle against. Well, other than having to, at one point, fly a plane when he doesn't actually know how to fly a plane, but that's not very threatening. He could just fake sick to get out of doing that. Eventually, Al shows up as a hologram that only Sam can see and hear. At first, of course, Sam is very confused with this, but he comes to depend on Al. Unfortunately for Sam, Al isn't allowed to tell him much of anything, other than he was involved in a time travel experiment that went awry, and later, how by flying the X-2 past Mach 3, he might be able to leap back through time, to the present. The theory of how Sam will get back home doesn't come up until very late in the leap, it seems. Actually, a little too late. By the point it does come up, we've been hanging around with Sam, the wife, the son, and the other pilots for what feels like a few days. And that's all the story has been thus far. Just Sam living in the shoes of some other guy and the awkwardness you would imagine coming from that. I think if Belisario brought in Ziggy's leaping theory and the notion of God, time, or some other form of consciousness being responsible for all of it, maybe a bit earlier, it would have brought some much-needed mystery, tension, and suspense to the first half of the leap. Because the thing is, even though Sam doesn't know how he got there, we do, thanks to that opening teaser. So maybe if they'd opened the episode here, with Sam just waking up in bed, you know, as opposed to him standing in the accelerator, it would have helped with the mystery angle. Think about it. If that teaser wasn't there, we'd be just as clueless as Sam is, and just as put off as he is by the appearance of Al. It would have made things more interesting, I think, along with building tension. As the story stands now, most of the tension comes from Sam not knowing how to fly, which is okay, but they don't use that circumstance to its full extent. Maybe they could have had Sam's self-doubt over flying part of Tom's pre-existing condition. Along with the other pilots, they each could have their concerns and doubts that the Mach 3 barrier just may be impossible to breach. I think Belisario could have given this idea some lip service during the interactions Sam had with the wife character, which I think would have helped a lot in giving her character a little bit more depth. As she's written now, she's a little one-dimensional, with most of her scenes and dialogue revolving around the fact that she's pregnant. Very pregnant. As if we couldn't tell. <laughs> it's done so often that the possibility of her going into labor before the end of the episode is 100% guaranteed. And actually, I found the way Sam interacts with the wife character, whose name is Peg, by the way, and who I immediately recognized from Ghostbusters and Charles in Charge, a little, and I can't believe I'm about to say this, massage In more than one instance, Sam relates through voiceover the fact that he's kind of attracted to her, despite the fact that she's pregnant, as if to imply that a woman is a hideous mutant freak when she's with child. I don't know, it just seemed a bit much to me. So, with Al's help, Sam breaks Mach 3 and lives, changing history. But he didn't leap, pretty much invalidating Ziggy's theory. However, Sam and Al don't have much time to discuss it, because Peg went into premature labor, spurned on by the shock of Sam's plane exploding. Finally, we get the labor scene that was teased throughout the entire episode, and it's pretty well done. Sam gets to show the confidence and heroics that he didn't quite get the chance to show when he was pretending to be a pilot, with his medical knowledge saving the day, essentially. This beat of him needing to help with just one more thing before he leaps is one of the reoccurring bits of the series, and I'm glad they kept using it, because it lends a little bit of credence to the notion of leaping being both based in science and magic, as in, there really is some kind of conscious force at work here that just won't let Sam leap until he gets it just right. Happy to hear that his mom will be okay, the son tosses a baseball to Sam, but as the ball comes down, Sam catches it in a new location. Sam has left behind the life and world of Tom Stratton and become minor league baseball player Tim Fox, who must, somehow, help his team win the game. I'm glad they didn't try to do the leaping effect like this every episode because I'm betting it would have gotten pretty tedious to try to pull off such a smooth transition every week. It's just that the blue white light and sound effect is perfect in its simplicity. Less is more, you know? However, I do wish we would have gotten more with this second leap. This part of the episode with Sam as a baseball player is really half of an episode at best, so I really don't have much to say about it. 
Basically, Sam needs to win the game for his team, you know, to put right what once went wrong, which he does. Although I will give the show credit for subverting expectations and having Sam win the game via a series of errors by the other team. However, it does have the unfortunate side effect of making Sam seem a little incompetent by striking out as hard as he does. I think a better swing of the writing comes earlier when Sam gets to make a call home to his dad, who in his time died decades ago. It's a really nice emotional payoff to the other times in the episode when Sam tried to call home but couldn't quite make the connection for one reason or another. However, I do think the conversation gets a little unrealistic and sentimental, with Sam convincing his dad that he's his father's uncle's son. I think it would have been a bit more believable if he just called him up and said, Uh, this is James. I was wondering if you had a moment to talk to me about your uh, laundry detergent. We do get to see the other side of the conversation, revealing his dad, and it's an actor we never see again. Obviously, they didn't know that Scott Bakula would end up playing Sam's father in makeup, but A, it's the pilot, so I understand there's still some things they'll have to work out. Genesis. Overall, although I was critical of some aspects of the episode, like its similarities, cliches, and one-note characters, I do think it's a pretty darn good first episode. I'm going to give it a B-. It's better than average, but loses some points in the story column. Where it succeeds, however, I think, is in the casting and performance arena. Scott Bakula and Dean Stockwell are great together. They don't have that lovable, odd couple dynamic quite dialed in yet, but the bones of it are there. The supporting characters are pretty good too, elevating the material by giving their characters a certain quirk or charm or some kind of real-world relatability. I'm really curious to see what Sam's next leap is all about because after watching this briefer than brief teaser at the end of the episode, in which he didn't say oh boy, by the way, I don't remember this episode at all. So I guess I'll see you in the next leap.